What are we doing here? And where are we gonna go? It's like we just woke up one morning and then it's welcome to the show. Don't ask any questions, just go with the flow. Make as much money as you can and try your best not to get broke. Copy everything you see on the TV from the hairstyles to the clothes and... Don't think too often, just do exactly as you're told. And if you ever get confused, then just turn towards the alcohol. You'll still hear your thoughts, then just turn up the radio as you learn to live a lifestyle of drugs, sex, and rock and roll. But in all honesty, I just need to know Is there more to the cycle than growing and getting old? Living and dying just to leave behind a happy home And a whole lot of property that somebody else is going to own I just really need to know before the casket's closed You are a pathological atheist mm. and therefore the thought of death is very final for you for me yeah. as a good irish catholic boy it's the start of something new and glorious for you that's it and for me it's the end of something glorious so i have to pack it all in <laughs> but you know I, I i'm i'm not depressed about it i i don't want to die any more than anyone else and i think there's a strange myth that atheists have nothing to live for it's the opposite we have nothing to die for you have we more have, to live for we have everything to live for yes yeah i would imagine you have a more focused attention to life because you think it ends when you die i think it's precious i think it's beautiful i think the world is amazing i love people animals art every hobby i can't i can't believe my luck that i'm alive for these 70 or 80 years because i'm not willing to gamble with my soul nor am i ready to take any chances these are just simple life questions and i'm just searching for some answers like what are we doing here and what is our purpose how did we get here and who made us so perfect and what happens once we go or is this world all really worth it questions we don't answer because apparently we don't really have to there's no purpose to this life and our existence is merely natural Then in that case, please let me ask you Did you create yourself or was it somebody else who had fashioned you? After one spermatozoan enters the egg, no others enter The vagina stretches to permit passage of the child And aided by contractions of the abdominal muscles The child is brought into the world in a normal manner this then is the story of reproduction. Cause you're a being that's impeccable, faultless and unparalleled. You're a product of supreme intelligence and I'm merely being rational. And, you know, and birth defects are tragic. They're tragic, particularly if they happen to the family afflicted by it. And you just look at images of these aborted fetuses because of the, and most of these are still born, others are born, you know, born with a heart outside the body. And so, this is all simply stupid design. And the problem is, if you look for what is intelligent, and yeah, you can find some things that are just really beautiful, and really, hey, that's, a, that's a clever, you know, the ball socket of the shoulder, and a lot of things you can point to, but then you stop looking at all the things that confound that revelation. For there isn't a camera on this earth that can come close to the human eye. We so much praise about the human eye, but anyone who's seen the full breadth of the electromagnetic spectrum will recognize how blind we are. Okay, and part of that blindness means we can't see, we, we can't detect magnetic fields, ionizing radiation, radon. We are like sitting ducks for, for ionizing radiation. You know a computer that can compete alongside the human mind. And if the whole world was to come together, we wouldn't be able to create a single fly. So many signs, yet we still deny. I love how when people watch, I don't know, David Attenborough or the Discovery Planet um, type thing, you know, where you see the absolute phenomenal majesty and complexity and bewildering beauty of nature and you stare at it and, and then and you, somebody next to you goes, and how can you say there's no God? Look at that. And then five minutes later, you're looking at the life cycle of a parasitic worm whose job is to bury itself in the eyeball of a little lamb and eat the, eat the eyeball from inside while the lamb dies in horrible agony. And then you turn to them and say, yeah, where is your God now? You know, I mean, you, got, you, can't, you can't just say there's a God because the world is beautiful. You have to account for bone cancer in children. 
you have to account for the fact that almost all animals in the wild live under stress with not enough to eat and will die violent and bloody deaths. There is, not, there is not any way that you can just choose the nice bits and say that means there is a God and ignore the true fact of what nature is. A science tries to justify that all this could come from none when it's a simple sum. Zero plus zero plus zero cannot possibly ever give you one. So from where did all this order come? But everything has its origins, a maker, a creator of its own I mean the only reason you're watching this video is because somebody had to press upload So we can believe in the Big Bang, but I'd rather believe in he who caused it to explode If the general picture, however, of a Big Bang followed by an expanding universe is correct What happened before that? Was the universe devoid of all matter and then the matter suddenly, somehow, created? How did that happen? In many cultures, the customary answer is that a god or gods created the universe out of nothing. But if we wish to pursue this question courageously, we must, of course, ask the next question. Where did God come from? If we decide that this is an unanswerable question, why not save a step and conclude that the origin of the universe is an unanswerable question? Or, if we say that God always existed, why not save a step and conclude that the universe always existed? There's no need for a creation, it was always here. Allah, the creator of everything along with every single soul. The ever living, the master, the only one who is in control. This is the thing about people who believe in God. <laughs> They're idiots. <laughs> if, if, and there's, no, there's no dancing around it. You're a borderline fucking mentalist. You're an, you're an idiot. You're like a 13-year-old kid who still believes in Santa. Oh, I'm still gonna get killed. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's... It, I don't hate people who believe in God. I don't hate them, right? But I just don't want to talk to them. I don't want to be around them. It's like how I don't hate the mentally insane, right? But the mentally insane and religious people are the same fucking bag. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm standing at a bar chatting to either of them, eventually I'll walk away going, okay. <laughs> Unlike his creation, beyond our imagination, and no, he's not a man, nor does he have any partners in association. He's on his own. And no, he did not ever leave us alone. Just like every manufacturer, he left us with an instruction manual. The Quran and Islam, and I'm sorry to jump to conclusions, but it's the only one possible. The only definition of God is the one and only supreme being. It's logical. A book with zero contradictions. There's, there are no contradictions in the Quran. Let's look at a few difficulties, and surely one of these would qualify as a contradiction, if not all of them. How long did it take Allah to create the universe? Simple question. But according to Surah 754, it took six days. According to 2559, it took eight days. What did Allah create first, the heavens or the earth? 229 says that the earth was created first, then the heavens. While 79, 27 through 30 says that the heavens were created first, then the earth. Who was the first Muslim? 614 says that Muhammad was the first Muslim. 7143 says that Moses was the first Muslim. And yet the Quran also declares that Adam and Abraham were Muslims. The Quran tells us in 1047 that Allah sent a messenger to every nation. Messenger to every nation. Surah 2, 125 through 129 tells us that Abraham and Ishmael came to Arabia. They built the Kaaba, and yet Surah 2846 claims that Muhammad was the first messenger who came to the Arabs. According to Surah 448, committing shirk is unforgivable. And later in the same Surah 153, Maha uh, Allah forgives people for committing shirk. Surah 262 says that Jews and Christians don't need to fear because we will be accepted by God. Surah 385 says that the only religion accepted by Allah is Islam. What is man created from? 1967 says that man started from nothing. 96, 1 through 2 says that many, uh, that man was created from a clot of blood. 2130 says that man was created from water. 164 says that man was created from a small seed. 1526 says that man was created from clay. 359 says that man was created from dust. 1161 says that man was created from earth. Then, uh, later Will on intercession on be possible on, on the day of judgment? Other sort Surah of 2, 122 through 123, 6, 51, and 82, 18, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19
is house arrest, and two, the penalty for sexual sin is 100 lashes. And there's a third claim. There's no contradictions in this book. You can't appeal to abrogation here and say God revealed one thing then, one thing later. This is before anything was revealed. As the Quran stood in heaven, it gave two contradictory penalties for the same sin. And at the same time, there was another claim saying in this book, there's no discrepancy, no contradiction. If you don't see this as a problem, I don't, I, I don't know what you would see as a problem.